Hello. So guys, our facilitator for this session is a special fasty based on popular demand. And she's a very special person for Isaac and for me as well. And she is tiny, she's demanding, and she's amazing. She's an energy bomb. So I'm going to invite her now. And let's give her a warm welcome. Let's see. With... And she's here. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you miss me a little bit. Uh, oh my God, I just entered into the screen and someone leaves. What's going on? No, I'm kidding. Hi guys. I wanna, I'm want i gonna put this in gallery view because I wanna see you all. Hi, wait, who's here? Ah, hello, hi. Uh, are everyone with cameras? Hello, hello, I wanna see some faces. Oh, I sick people. I haven't seen those in a while. Um, <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Good. Let's get the party started. I'm just gonna put my screen. Uh, oh, I need to also be conscious that I cannot be that loud. Like, you know, it's not that before that, if I was in the AI flood, I could just be like, you know, I could be loud and my excuse could be, yo, I'm delivering BB Summit. Right now, I cannot go to my flatmates and be like, <laughs> excuse me, I'm delivering BB Summit. Um, they will probably <clears throat> uh, slap me in the face. Um, great. So let's uh, get it started. Uh, oh, stop sharing my screen. Bomba. Well, hello everyone. So I am here today to talk with you a little bit about engagement with Isaac in the current context. Um, it's funny because I've not been in ISEC for the last uh, what, uh, five months, um, but I think it's something like that can be um, seen from a really generalistic perspective um, because like the only way to engage people at the moment is virtually. So and that is kind of the direction we're going to be taking in, uh, in the space. But for anyone, maybe, who uh, has not been in a space before, or that is your first BB Summit, you have never attended a conference, which I wouldn't think so at this point. Um, my name is Noel, and I was uh, AIVP Public Relations last year, five months ago. It feels like it's been a really, really long time, but it's not. Um, and currently I am working as a sales training coordinator in DHL Express. So I moved to work with one of our global partners. You see, that's how it should be. Um, <laughs> and I am um, basically like what I do is that um, in the HL Express, we have, um, let's say a curriculum of cells that we have built up and all our cells, uh, representatives, all the sales force of DHL gets uh, trained on these new skills. And um, basically what I do is that we run virtual trainings, like coordinate that and like give support to, to all the countries that are running um, this training. So imagine it's like if you're doing train the trainers, but basically like train the sellers throughout all the DHL offices. Um, and it's really funny because constantly I'm sending to Christina, our AI BPD, I'm constantly sending to her like, hey, oh my God, look, this is this was in the training. You should you should tell this to your people. They need to know how to sell like this and da 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 da. And she's like, oh my God, yes. So I'm learning a lot about sales um, by by this new role. But of course, I'm not here to talk about sales training coordination because what? No. Um, I'm here to talk about engagement with Isaac. But before we start, I know that you guys have uh, come from, uh, I think they were two, two days, three days of summit already. So right, it's, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Um, and I know how tiring it can get even more now that we're doing it guys on computer. Cause like, I didn't feel so tired as I felt before when working since everything I do needs to be on Zoom calls, Skype calls or everything. I feel like my brain needs to process so many things and at the end of the day i'm like jesus i'm like a fried chicken inside of my head but i can imagine you all might be tired or anything but 
I just wanted to uh, first like check the objectives, of course. I will go in to check if you guys paid attention at the last BD Summit, obviously, because if you remember, I was doing my world tour through all the regions and delivering PR sessions in all the, in all the regions. Uh, and I want to see that you guys remember what I was trying to tell you. If not, then definitely I did not sleep uh, because then I probably said some really stupid things to you in that session if you cannot remember it. And then, of course, like as I said, we want to understand how we can really engage partners and young people more in the current context. But as I said to the check-in, I want to test something with you. So the first thing you see, the emoji with the stars, you're feeling amazing, you're feeling fabulous, you're feeling like, yes, let's engage people, let's do this, virtual here, virtual there, I'm feeling amazing. So that's option one. Option two is like, yo, I'm falling asleep. Like I just woke up like 45 minutes ago, uh, 6 a.m. here, by the way. And the last one is like, I am lost. I cannot find anything. I cannot find my life. I cannot find my anything. I cannot find my brain. I am lost. So what we're going to do is we're going to try something new. I don't know if you guys have used it so far, but Zoom has this amazing option. What? That is called annotation. Um, and I want to try that up with you. So if you go to your, um, your, I think it's like your lower part of the screen, you have um, something to annotate and like the option to annotate, okay? And I want you guys to go to the part of stamp and then choose either a star, a heart or whatever you want, depending on how you're feeling and you just like uh, put it wherever you want in, ter in terms of the moods. So remember, mood number one is uh, I'm feeling fabulous. Number two, I am tired. I want to go to sleep. Um, and second, third, third one is like, I'm lost. Please provide me with a brain. So I can see some of you just put it inside of the beautiful square. <laughs> um okay uh -huh. everyone is feeling fabulous something in the middle i see there someone put something in the middle i get it it's acceptable good uh-huh yay okay that's great uh-huh that's a lot of people that are feeling happy okay who was the one that put it in the middle i'm just you are like an outlayer here tell me what's going on why are you going more towards the middle or oh, two people um, so I think, who is it? Who put it in the middle? Just turn on your mic and tell me what's going on. I'm feeling as excited at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. So then I would try to be as energetic as possible to keep you engaged so you don't fall asleep. So okay. let's, let's make that commitment. Um, so then it works out for all of us. Um, okay. So, uh, for some kind of reason. I lost my mouse. Why does this happen always? Okay, um, good. So now we're gonna stop using this beautiful annotation tool. No, I'm, I am painting myself. What is this? Clear all drawings. Can you, okay. Ah. Uh, ah, there you go, there you go. Good, and then the next chatting question that I have for you is super important question. Who is actually excited to see me? And there's only one right question here. So be careful. Um, there's only one right question and you know what that right question is. You're all happy to see me, obviously. Um, for sure, you have been missing me. I know it, but I am 100% sure that Sumi has been taking care of you all amazingly. So that's no problem. But let's leave the jokes aside. I mean, it's not a joke because obviously you all miss me. But, um, Let's go into the real important things. And that is what we're here to talk about. And it's engagement with ISEC. But before we move into that, I actually want to ask you and want to refresh your minds in terms of PR. Okay. I know that some of you are public, you are some are MCPs BD, some of you are MCPs PD, so many of you are doing partnership management, which covers also a little bit of uh, PR, and some of you are full MCPs PR. So, which is the cool one? No, I'm kidding. Uh, whoever does PR is cool, okay? Um, great. 
And so then if we look at that, I wanna um, then first kind of refresh your mind. And if there's anyone just really here, turn on your mic and like say it, what is PR? Who can remember what we talked about in the BD Summit? What is, how would do we describe PR? I think I can go. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, to me, public relation is a um, process of thinking, process of how uh, we can actually uh, uphold the reputation of one organization or corporations. And also, it's also talking about the public uh, opinions and our perceptions towards the organization and the corporation as well. That's my definition of PR. Good. You said some keywords. That's good. I like that. But just to get it more in a nutshell, if you remember, guys, we talked about this. Um, public relations comes actually like the whole public part comes from connected to the world of publicity. And publicity is defined as a practice management and positioning of information to the public to protect and enhance brand and reputation. So you said reputation then and you said what are the kind of actions we can take to work towards the reputation and really like the kind of what uh, the public is saying about the organization or company. Um, if we want to put it in a more simpler way, of course, it's getting visibility for the organization, the products and initiatives run by that specific organization. So then if we think about ISEC, is that what we're doing is that we're bringing visibility to the organization while ensuring that we're also building up on the reputation of it because you can expose yourself as an organization, but you can also expose yourself in a negative way. Like you can be doing negative, taking negative actions and that can be giving you exposure, but they're not, not the right one, no? So getting visibility to ensure that we enhance brand, uh, brand reputation, okay? So that's always super important because you always need to keep that in mind, whatever type of initiative you're running that you keep in mind, what is the goal of it? You know, and what is the goal of what you're doing? That at the end of the day, what we want is that more people know about ISAC and more people, if we say engagement with ISAC, more people engage with ISAC, no? So that is, um, I think like an important thing that you should always keep in mind. Um, good. So if you remember, I also gave you this table because we were talking, okay, so if you think about ISEC, NPR in ISEC is not the same way as PR is done externally. Because PR done externally is that you have a, like when we think about public relations, the actual role of someone of public relations and have noticed is now also in DHL, someone that is the spokesperson, it's a building up communication materials and all these kind of things. But we have interpreted a little bit different inside of ISEC and we have build different, let's say, scopes of what we what we do in, to, in terms of building visibility for ISEC. So we talked about it in the BD Summit, we talked about relations management, okay? We talked about communications management, reputation management, and events management. Those are like the key scopes of areas that if you as an MCP, BD, BD, um, or PR, you're looking into like focusing, um, then, these sort of things you can do because we also talked at the last video summit in May that you cannot do everything. Like PR is so extensive that you could do, if you wanted to do all of it, you will go insane. You really need to focus or take on certain things or connect all of it a little bit and build like one small package of projects that takes a bit of everything, but you cannot work on all of them at the same time. Um, of course, repetition management, you should because, well, yeah you need to be careful that no one is saying bad things about Isaac, no? So if uh, whoever that attended the BD Summit in May and also whoever did the PR university, <laughs> um, you can, anyone tell me what we mean by relations management? What is relations management? And I can give you a tip. So whoever that doesn't know this tip on Zoom, if you click on your space bar for a long time, it will temporarily unmute you. So you don't have to go click on your microphone every time you want to talk. So then you don't feel that bothering. Yeah, you see some it's like, what? <laughs> I found that out as well, like three weeks ago. So if anyone wants to talk, space bar, bam. I see someone unmuted. So many like what? 
spaces. Yeah, cool, no? Um, but yeah, anyone that wants to tell me what is relations management? <laughs> Okay, guys, you know, constant learning is also something important, refreshing information. Mm -hmm. but it's okay. I can go. I, oh, okay. I, I was willing no to right. share. I was willing go to share. Oh, okay. It's okay. I didn't get to see it anyway. Um, for <laughs> me, uh, relations management covers strategic alliances. So it can be the UN, it can be youth organizations, it can also be the government. So, yeah, I think it's covering strategic alliances, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, exactly. Very well um, said. It's like responsible with SPR, like we're responsible of making strategic alliances or building strategic alliances that can bring added value to um, to making our strong our brand stronger, building more credibility. And when we talk about what are those like strategic alliances, yes, we have said is any other youth organizations, like-minded youth organizations, NGOs, governments, or UN agencies, no? Um, and then additionally, um, and public relations is as well, uh, or like the role of PR and BD a lot of times also inside um, covers kind of like local government um, relations. Um, and as well, sometimes um, if we look at it from an ISIC perspective, from, from ISIC, we also do alumni management that also falls under relations management. Okay, anyone that can tell us a bit of communications management, what would that mean under the scope, if we think about the scope of building visibility? Oh, I think I can go. Uh, so, uh, for uh, so for communication management, I think like uh, we can do this like in the form of like co-created campaigns uh, with our strategic alliances. Uh, for example, like through media relations or like press communications. Yes, I like that. Well said. Um, and the important thing is that to keep in mind that this is at the end of the day, you're not the responsible of creating the brand of Isaac. You work in synergy to ensure that we are positioning the brand of Isaac. So that's why with PR, a lot of times people say like, oh, no, PR works alone. We will do everything alone. We don't. No, for if you are working in terms of communications management, you need to synergize with marketing because you need to understand what are the messages? What is the brand that we're trying to communicate right now? What is, where do we want to get with that brand? What is the, um, let's say the vision that we had for the brand? So then what strategies can you build up as PR to get there and support marketing, not just from a commercial perspective, but really from a public relations perspective. Um, <clears throat> and as you said, co-created campaigns, uh, media relations and press communications. And then, of course, I would just cover this one myself, but in terms of reputation management, um, PR is really responsible of everything that is connected to crisis communications and brand reputation management. So um, here is also where you where everything goes into risk management. And I can imagine for anyone that is like a full MCVP PR, um, your reputation management has been kind of like uh, on fire in the last months, probably like all the type of things that needs to be communicated. I know it can be difficult with a lot of things of operations uh, not working, no operations happening um, and the repercussions of that. So I can imagine that some of you have been actively working on that. Um, and then and the last one is event management. So if, I mean, it's pretty clear, actually that one falls like pretty clear into that, but if we think about event management, it's really like um, what are like what are like the type of initiatives, event initiatives that we can do um, to um, like build visibility, to bring visibility and engagement um, to ISEC. And as <clears throat> as an MCPPR, your role is really to uh, manage the co-creation or the conceptualization of these events or engagement spaces, because it doesn't have to be an event itself. It can also be a webinar. It can also be um, a hackathon. Um, so this, any type of like engagement activities that you can do with people. So you conceptualize it, meaning you really like build up what is the 
goal of this event objectives and when it comes to really bringing revenue towards it that's when you synergize with bd if you're an mcbp bd that covers pr responsibilities well then you work on both at the same time no obviously <laughs> sweet um, but otherwise you synergize with pr so you see pr is not that lonely after all um great so that was then that was just wanted to recap on that because it's important that we have this uh, we are aware of these things and even more probably now with like um everything that goes into um like everything that has been happening and i can remember last time we talked it was in may your terms hadn't started yet now you have started and i can imagine that all of you had all these like ideas of strategies and things you wanted to do but then of course in the current context there's so many things that we need to either firefight or um be or like kind of refocus that we kind of lose like an idea of what we actually wanted to do or like what should be what is the direction of what should be actually the things that we should be doing or focusing on in terms of our goals um good so then right now what i want to do is that i want to look go into strategic alliances and um before we go into that i wanted to ask you what is a strategic alliance how would how would you describe strategic alliances This is a really confusing one eh? because even when I got to be AI BPPR, people were telling me like strategic alliance. I'm like, what? I've never heard of that. <laughs> but now you have been MCVP for a few months. I can go. I think, go um, yeah, I think strategic alliances is when the cooperation within one organization and other organization is actually cooperating something beyond that what that uh, what they can do uh, individually. Like, yeah, maybe that's the kind of definition. Yeah, well done. That was a really good, like you said, uh, a cooperation between two organizations so they can work on something that goes beyond them. And I think like that's like, you couldn't have described it better um, because it's exactly that what we have because it's not about what we want as individuals, it's what we can create together to move both organizations forward. So it's not only a a gain for one organization, but it should be a win-win for both. So that is like, uh, and that is why it is strategic. If we look at it, actually it's like a company could also be a strategic alliance, but we have taken that specific point under PR because we are not working based on a revenue, um, let's say um, goal. Um, here where we're working on is toward visibility. So it becomes more strategic than more of like a partnership partnership that we're building just because of um, bringing revenue to the organization no? um but we also covered and i think uh i'm not i don't remember 100 who it was but um someone mentioned yeah the type of organizations we work with or like type of areas um that fall under our strategic alliances and is youth organizations ngos governments un agencies and civil society and um, I think like if we cover under what exactly, for example, um, it's um, like the UN agencies, I know that for a lot of AP, in, in, in the AP region, there is a lot of like youth engagement around UN agencies. I'm really aware of that. Um, so it's actually a really good market to be working with um, UN agencies, but it's really important that you have it clear and you understand um, how it is to work with UN agencies. And um, I think like I covered it in the previous video summit and if you check the PR university, I think I have a video as well where I talked about it, but um, working with UN agencies can be something that demands time. Um, and a lot of times we just partner with a UN agency for the fact of like the, the weight that the name has, let's say, Oh my God, if someone sees uh, an external sees that Isaac is working with UN women in the Philippines, of course, is UN women. It's something, it's a name that people know, obviously it's something that, yeah, already with that, it brings a lot of value. But a lot of what I have seen or what I have saw throughout my, throughout my IVP term is that when I will ask MCBPs, okay, give me a list of all the strategic alliances that you're working with and what are the things that you're doing with them, 
It's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, we're partnering with you and women. We're partnering with you and volunteers. We're partnering with uh, UNIDO or whatever. And then I would tell them, and what do you do? Oh no, we don't do anything. I'm like, then what? You're saying you're collaborating with you and women just for the sake of saying you're collaborating with you and women? Do you have anything to show for how you are building visibility? How are you um, really uh, building leadership for young people? If we are an organization that is doing that, all of the activities that you do should then at the end of the day not bring visibility so only for the fact that you're partnering with a UN agency, but it should bring uh, visibility to the fact of what you're doing with you and women to build leadership among young people, no? So that should be something that, I don't wanna go in depth into UN agencies right now, but I just want you to drop that thing to you now. So you keep it in mind when you're working with UN agencies. Um, Cause otherwise this will become like a whole PR university session. And I wanna go a little bit more into the engagement part, but I just wanted to um, reinforce that because I've been pretty passionate about this point throughout my whole AI term. Um, because I myself, I did not work with any UN agency throughout my item because I realized that we were not doing anything that was really enhancing that and really putting out there the fact that we are building like leadership in young people because there was nothing that was getting toward and the projects that they were proposing were also not really reinforcing that what we do as an organization. And in some kind of way we were being used or I felt like we they were kind of using the fact of like we are a youth organization so they can say that they are engaging young people. But that's my personal opinion. I cannot say it now. <laughs> um, but it's just for you guys to always keep that in mind. Good. So thinking about that, when we talk about relations management, key initiative that we can drive with alliances um, I, if we remember, we talked about categorizing them a little bit. Okay, how do we bring value to the membership experience? So capacity building sp spaces. So as PR slash BV, you can also collaborate to bring trainings to your conferences. So a lot of you, I think like there was national conference period right now. A lot of people are having national conferences. So probably you brought, as BV, you brought a partner to deliver a workshop, but you can also bring a strategic alliance um, because with strategic alliances, it's a lot about really building the relationship with a company. It's just really like you build a relationship, but you can easily take more actions that would, and it would bring, of course, a more visible result, which is your revenue. With a strategic alliances, the, the result is a, like not visible right away because like you are building towards something and like the visibility or the reputation or the enhancement of it, you're only going to be able to see it later and not right, like the, the impact of it is not direct, it's, it's comes like, it comes later. So what are the things that you can do? Conference engagements as well, how can you increase the reach among your target audience? So how can you engage them in terms of communications? Um, so publications, dissemination of any projects you're having. So we talked about last time, if um, you're having a GV project, oh my God, no, um, a GTA project, <laughs> global teach project, I'm forgetting because I'm like so out of it, um, a GTA project, and um, you want to engage with an NGO that it also focuses on the topic of education and you want to disseminate it with them, that's something you can do. Or enhancing credibility and visibility, that's where also co branded campaigns come in media communications, and of course, events. And we have talked a lot about it in terms of you speak forums or the event that we organized back in May, which is Global Leadership Day, which could be also looked a little bit um, in that perspective as well. So, so here, um, I wanted, I'm, it, like I think so many I communicated to you guys, but I wanted you to make sure that you prepare some of your strategic alliances. Um, if you were an MC, if you're an MC PBD and you have a PR person in your team, then of course just make sure that you are communicating with your PR person and you synergize with them. But um, I really want for you to make to have clear who are your strategic alliances. Okay. Um, uh, and right now, what I want to do is that I want to try again, once again, with you the annotation tool, and. I want you to write what have been maybe just your learnings so far in terms of strategic alliances. Um, and then maybe what has made it, um, why do you think it has 
if it has been successful, why? Um, and if not, why not? And just try to keep it really simple. If you can use it in like keywords or something like that, write it in the text. And I will, um, I don't know why this, why my computer just does this every time. Ah, okay. So I activated the annotation part so everyone can look for a corner and the annotation part has an option of text. So just go to the text tool and just like drop it, like make a text there and then we can, we can do that. And I'm just gonna give you like one minute, just really like how have your strategic alliance been so far? If you have one word to describe and it's like nothing, <laughs> then it's also fine. But it's like bad, you can also do that. If you wanna use excellent, go for it. So just type. I don't see people typing. Let's go for it. I see a whiteboard and nothing on it. <laughs> well done, Andy. <laughs> Can you tell me why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anyone else, guys? Are you using it? I'm not sure. Can I go ask someone? People, where are my texts? I just see a white whiteboard empty like my soul no I'm kidding um mixed feelings okay okay anyone else because I'm gonna make you talk and I don't see much here okay and summer, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think I'm just, uh, just gonna add up some comments towards that in terms of uh, not much B context because we do not have PR in the team at the moment. And if you realize a lot of the things that um, I have mentioned, um, they fall a lot as well under a job description of BD, or they can be easily connected in projects that you do in BD. So if as BD you're doing um, a use big forum or like a virtual one, or you are um, having any type of initiatives, if you have a new partner, you can do press art, like you can do press releases for new partnerships. Um, you can do co-campaigns co with them. Like already that you are also tackling aspects of PR. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you are not doing anything for PR. It's just that your focus is not on it. But if you would additionally add these tiny actions in certain projects you're running, um, then you are already tackling points of enhancing reputation or building visibility. Just adding it up there. Um, Okay, NGOs do co-branded activities. Uh, Andy, you mentioned UNDP and SDGs. Okay, um, and I think it was Gika, you mentioned mixed feelings. Um, how is that looking like? Oh, I can explain, so hi, I'm Gika. <laughs> um, the reason why I put mixed feelings is because while it's promising to have these strategic alliances, like. The outcome has been um in terms of like the collaboration tax or it's really tiring because like there's um there's misalignment of interest or like even with the manpower that they provide to us like they say oh we want to partner with isaac and then the people that we end up working with on the project itself are people who don't have high decision making power so we end up um, working with the interns and it really slows down the process of the actual collaboration because these are interns they can't exactly make the biggest decisions with us so that's why I have mixed feelings for it but anyway like I'm trying my best to realign as we go so that's why okay can you give me an example of an organization that you have been working with and where this happened uh-huh 
Um, so we are partnered with this organization called um, Vote Pilipinas. Uh, basically, it's this organization that aims to give voters education because um, our, our elections are coming up in two years and they want that a lot of Filipinos register to vote. But then when we did our event, they gave us interns. And like it really slowed down the process for coordination, for preparing for the event itself. So um, on Isaac's end, we were pretty efficient. But on their end, it was really slow. So that's why I had mixed feelings towards it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it connected to someone else's point here. Not all are successful and Isaac is easily used. Um, I think someone else wrote this. I think like... Um, it can be also kind of like a bit in your case. And I think what you need to do when that is happening is that you then need to go and sit down and be, okay, now I'm looking towards replanning. I need to review all the people, all the organizations I'm working with. What are the things that we have done? How has the collaboration been so far? And um, are the projects that we're doing bringing something to them and to us as well? If like right now, it is only bringing a value to them then fuck it, I'm sorry, but um, we don't need to be working with them because at the end, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, it should be a win-win situation. And I think like that's where it falls in. Sometimes it's better to have two, three strategic alliances than 15 and those three, the prices that you're running together are amazing. And that's <clears throat> from my experience and I talked about it last time at the BD Summit, I was working really like having a weekly meeting with three uh, strategic alliances it was JCI, the OSCD, and um, <clears throat> WWF, so World Wildlife Fund. Those were the three that I had weekly calls with and I would talk with and we will be working on our projects and we will be doing things together. I will be inviting them to conferences uh, and all of these things. We will be creating events and initiatives together. And all of the other ones I had maybe a bi-weekly call, every two weeks call, once a month a call um, and see what are the potential initiatives we could run together. But I was focusing on those that were really bringing value, not only to like to us and organization, but it would bring in common value. Uh, and it was really helping both organizations. Um, so keep that in mind. And I think we're gonna do an exam, an activity about it later, but just keep it in mind, okay? Um, uh, good, so I need to um, clear this. Uh, yo, this is so weird, okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> so now I want to cover real quick about event management. I don't want to go really depth into this, but in terms of events, we know you guys have experience. You have been members. You have been probably in EVs. You have been now in MC, and there is different types of engagements we can do. Uh, no, there is engagements that are more bringing something to the ISEC membership, so it's capacity building spaces, alumni spaces, and conference engagements. Then if we talk about events for external youth, um, it's all of the events where we are engaging young people um, externally and bringing our partners into it. And then of course there is the events you go to and you attend and you participate in the name of ISEC um, that are organized by an external. No? So there are, uh, those are the initiatives that falls under event management. Um, so also the part of external representation falls under this. No? Um, and I just want to do a sensing. Um, we're not going to go really deep into this right now, but I just want to do a sensing of who has run here any type of virtual engagement. Um, I you speak forum maybe at Global Leadership Day. Maybe you brought a partner to a conference. As I said, some of you were having a national conferences right now. So who has done it? Maybe just like turn on your mic. If you want to say like, yeah, I have run a you speak forum or anything like this. No, no one? None of you has done a uh, webinar? I have. I want to share. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, we're currently having a partnership with an organization. It's called Tasty Culture Bites. And we did, and we do like a monthly master class where the speakers are going to share like knowledge and insights to our members and we're planning to have a virtual engagement later in december we're going to have a public uh event that is going to be about mental health so it's going to be the first ever uh, virtual event uh, hosted by isaac in cambodia 
Thank you. Nice. Well done. I like that. That's that's something really nice like that you're doing there. I like this. Um, it's like also kind of new if you think about it, because it's like a kind of classroom, kind of thing like a master class. It's another type of engagement, virtual engagement. I like that. That's great. Um, so just wanted to uh, kind of, I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, but in virtual event guidelines, we know that um, these were created and were launched back uh, in July. Uh, was it July? Yeah, July. So there is this virtual event guidelines that really like summer ups and it's linked here. So afterwards, when you have the presentation, you can go through it. Um, but it really covers external analysis and really defining like benchmarking in terms of like a virtual event, seeing what other type of virtual events are happening externally and to ensure that we are not copying and recreating, but we also have something unique that we're bringing as value towards people. How do you scope an event? Really, how do you really start looking into building that event? Then it goes into the planning, the event design, virtual event delivery, and then follow up in terms of sales. But like right now, it's just here. There is some GCPs, and then there is a section where we talk about um, you speak form. So these guidelines are there. You can go into them. You can go in depth to them. It's a lot of information. Um, and like here, one of the things that I wanted to cover is something that, for example, um, you just mentioned, uh, Michelle. And it's like you're doing some sort of like a, a master class. So it's like if we will categorize that, that will fall under the category of webinars a little bit, no? So you can do webinars. Those are something that can also be implemented in a virtual format, and it can be considered a virtual event. Um, you can have your virtual conferences, um, and then there's the concept of external hybrid conferences as well, where it's basically like where you are bringing external youth into your events, no? Um, here, really, when we were working in building Global Leadership Day, uh, we used the event canvas um, to really scope, meaning like in the whole process of brainstorming how the event would look like, um, this is something you should go through. Every time you do this or you run an event, you need to have a clarity why you're doing it. You need to be, you need to understand why you're bringing this event here. What do you want to tackle? What do you want people get out of it? What are the outcomes you want to have? And like the same way that you have the business model canvas, um, there is an event canvas that really help you scope it. And it, based on that, you have more clarity when you go into the planning. Because otherwise you get to the planning and you're lost. You don't know where to start. But with the event canvas, you scope the whole project. And then you know what are the different sections you need to be tackling. So I really, really recommend doing this um, because an event like this should not be something you just do from one day to the other because you want to make sure that it's done well. It is done well. Otherwise, it brings, if it goes wrong, uh -huh, bad reputation for the organization. No? So then here it goes through like steps of how to plan virtual events. Um, always it's important that you are, what can happen a lot of times is that you do events um, on a topic that is being pushed by the partner. Um, but it's always important that you already come with a proposed idea. And when you know what the event is about, because you have scoped it, and you know what is the, the concept of your event, then you know which partners to go to, because you know that they will be adding value to this space, and it will be relevant to them. So for example, if it's an event of the future of work, you're going to be working with NGOs that are working on building skills for young people or with companies that are having any type of initiatives right now that are in relation with upskilling. You're going to go to, not I don't know, the OSCD because the OSCD does a lot of our future of work. You're going to talk with an entrepreneur or anything like this because it's connected to the concept that you have already defined for your event. Your event should not be built by your partner. It should be built with you and you can take on inputs from them, okay? It's also super, super important because a lot of times we get ourselves with pressure. This is also nothing enough for BD, for PR, but for a BD person because we say, okay, there is the revenue that is coming in, so they are paying. So, oh my God, I need to make sure that then if they tell me like, no, I want, I want my workshop to be about this, but it doesn't align to the whole concept that I have to the event and the whole agenda and the topics we want to cover, but they are bringing money, mm -hmm. should we do it? Like, there is a pressure there and I get it, but you need to understand as well that if you scope it and you really plan and you conceptualize it, you need to stick to it and really 
keep on the topic and making the topic relevant for your audience, meaning our young people. So as I said, it goes here to different steps that you can go. Um, and then it has like, okay, how do you start, start designing? What are all the elements that you need to take into consideration when working with, um, with an external event? Um, then what are the things you need to take into consideration when hosting the event? And then of course on the delivery. So all of these things are like there, you can check them out. I don't wanna go into detail with them. Um, but what I wanted to highlight is that you have also GCPs in this, in this thing. Um, you have one from Singapore because they were the first ones to actually run Uspeaks uh, forum in a virtual format back in, uh, I think it was June. Yeah, it was in June. So, um, or if, so if, if the MCP from Singapore is here, you can correct me. Um, but as far as I know, it was June. Um, so yeah, you can look into that. What are the things that they did? And there's a video, oh my God. Um, then of course there is Global Leadership Day. You all have been seeing you also what we did. Um, and then there is also the report that you can be able to access uh, to uh, in the blog. We did a press release after it where you can see all the things that we gained. And if you wanna know more about Global Leadership Day, you can also approach me later because I could talk forever about it. Um, so if you wanna know more, let me know. But then you also have here a section of how you really can turn you speak forum into a visual format. And a lot of people say, okay, it would change, it would be completely different. Like, no, how could that's not possible? You cannot run you speak forum in that concept. And I'm like, yes, you can, because at the end, the idea of the event doesn't change. It's just the way that you're delivering it. That's the only thing it changes. So in terms of creation of agenda, in terms of like choosing the topics or anything like that, that stays the same. It's just how you're going to implement it. That's the moment where um, you need to take um, you need to rethink and see how that is going to happen. So um, we also suggest here, like, okay, what are the thing of what are the type of spaces you can be providing? And I think like some things that are super important. Maybe you have learned as well from experience now in the last months for for everyone or for anyone that has delivered a space, is that you cannot do the same way that you would do. You speak for them a whole day. You cannot expect someone to stick for 24 hours or for like eight hours to an event, you know, you need to make sure and to listen to a keynote for one hour. You need to make sure that the spaces are in a length where you will not lose the attention of your attendees. Um, and that whatever type of space that is being delivered um, can be easily turned into a virtual, into a virtual concept, no? So all of that is here. You can find all of these things in terms of agenda management, brand management. There is an example from ICT in Romania on how they were working there on their marketing for the event. And um, just a little bit of a recap um, around that, okay? Good, so before we go into the working time and we're gonna have a little bit less of a time for that, but let's do this. Um, what I wanna do with you is that you have the pl planning working sheet. Um, I will, post this right now in the chat. Um, and where's the chat? Here. And what I want you to do is that if you go on it, um, this is the one thing that you guys, if you are PR, if you are MCP PR fully or you're MCP PD, you incorporate some parts of it, or if you're PD, meaning BD NPR, you incorporate some parts of it into it. Um, and it's about really like, um, what I want you to do is like to make a copy. If you don't have it, if you have your own already, then make sure that you get your own, um, but make a copy. And really like um, go to the uh, uh, um, strategic alliances overview, which is this one. And the strategic alliances overview has normally we do this in preparation for your term, but you should always keep on reviewing it. It's like you define which organization you're working with, what type of, um, of let's say, agreement you have with them. Is it a memorandum of understanding? Is it a letter of intent? Is it a contract? Can be. Um, what is the current cooperations that you're having? Next steps and then recommendations. This was like more towards like, okay, the planning process. But what I want you to do now is that I want you to copy it so really like going to the alliances and um, 
copy a new tab of the alliances overview so you are not messing up whatever you have done before or whatever here and name it alliances planning okay so just rechange the name so make a copy of the whole spreadsheet then make a copy of alliances overview tab name it alliances planning um and then what i want you to do is that just put the name of we're going to do now one strategic alliance okay so put the name of one of your focus strategic alliances is when i say focus strategic alliance is really the one that you have been you really have a routine of working together you have um like uh activities that you do regularly together okay not just like oh we did an event three months ago no but you actually have a constant communication and you're building on different activities together um describe what you're doing at the moment and then describe what are the future initiatives in terms of engagement that you would like to run with that strategic alliance okay so i'm going to give you around five minutes for that so just really like think okay this is the strategic alliance is really also first think as well about the strategic alliance if you don't have one that you really have a strong relationship built with then think about um one that you want to build that relationship with so the approach will be here okay what are the things i want to do with that strategic alliance okay is that clear or do you guys want to give want me to give you a concrete example because i have a concrete example in mind that i can give you Is it all clear? You just can put your thumbs up with your hand so I know, so I can see you. Also, I see some people nodding. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, we actually put down uh, what is the strategic alliance that we uh, that we have uh, in collaboration, and also uh, and also we wanting to discuss how can we move forward on next step, but we didn't manage to have the time. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I so we put down. Uh, so what <laughs> we put down is the current that we the current strategy alliance that we have is uh, teach for Malaysia. Uh, like mm -hmm. they are actually our a very very long uh, strategy partner uh, that's supporting mm -hmm. on our projects. Uh, at the same time, they are also involving in our conference, youth speak forum, and go largest lesson before. That's great. Okay, yeah. so um, do they? Do you know what are because teach? I know teach for all because we used to work with them in AI and then I worked with them when I was in Isaac in Austria. Um, but normally what they do is that they have a focus um, of education and skilling that they do. Do you know what is the focus that they have? Do they have any focus on a specific area of education um, or they're really just generals about educating young people about or children about everything? Uh, they are actually more focused on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, this mm -hmm. is also of our project. And then at the same time, uh, they, uh, what they are supporting us on our membership is more towards leadership development and also uh, virtual event engagement. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty clear. If, when you know also what are their focuses as well as an organization, there can be easily a lot of things that can be created with them. I think like easily with them, you have you could have, um, because I know that Teach uh, for All as an organization, they are like a, a community of different teachers that mm -hmm. are bringing different things and like of topics. So an idea, just like helping you here to, you can build forward, is even proposing them a webinar series where different of their teachers can come and deliver short trainings in terms of STEM. No, because we know that um, for young people, it's so important to build on their digital skills at the moment. So that could be an initiative that you could work with them, even build up further to keep on engaging them. Um, and also 
doing something different than the already the things you're approaching with them. No. Good. Yep. Thumbs up. That's good. Um, so um, as I had mentioned to you guys, it's super, super important. If you guys struggle right now to identify what are the current things that you're doing with the strategic alliance and what are the things you want to be doing with them, then there is no clarity first on your side on this organization. You need to have way more clarity on them. So as I was, I was just mentioning with the Malaysia team, like they, okay, they know that they are focusing in terms of SDM, this um, teach, for, teach for Malaysia. So, okay, they have that clear, they know what is their strategy, what is their direction. And then you find as well, what is the common ground? But if you don't have clarity neither on what your or what your strategic alliances is working on, then it means first you're not having a good, um, let's say, relation management because you're not having a proper routine and a proper um, relation nurturing because you're not having spaces where you discuss and you brainstorm with them. So make sure that you take that into consideration and also you review the way that you are uh, just engaging with each other and just like communicating with each other um, and really like looking into the summer. I know that like the first semester is always tricky for MCVPs. You are just really settling into your role. Um, you are learning step by step. But the second semester, you become a little bit more experienced, no? Um, and I think like now is like the opportunity where you guys could really going into replanning, recheck uh, all of the projects that you have. And someone said, okay, I don't have, PR hasn't been a focus in the first semester. Well, also doesn't, doesn't need to be a focus, but just look into the PR projects and initiatives we have and different activities of PR that can be embedded into already existing projects. If you're running a USP forum as an MCPBD, I reach for one. What type of communication strategies can you implement inside of the USP forum already that can help on building the reputation and visibility? for the event, but also for ISEC. What can be done afterwards to communicate the success of it? Um, what PR uh, partners can you invite as well to the USP Forum? Can also be that normally when we were running events like this in uh, AI, that we will have 80% of the partners being BD and 20% being PR, because we still wanted to have PR partners being engaged, but we also knew that we needed to reach a revenue goal. So that's also something that you keep in mind. Um, but then for someone that is fully B PR, you have been working already on different engagement and initiatives, you have been working with initiatives, but it hasn't been as successful as you wanted, then you really need to relook into your strategic alliances. Because at the end of the day, if you look at it, we cannot just be doing virtual engagements by ourselves, we can, but we'll still need the support from other organizations to really build on the visibility for that event a lot of times, because we cannot expect that just by us putting the event on Facebook that we will have 500 people attending and 500 people registering. It covers a lot of, lot of other uh, efforts into it. So really review that, really look into your things, um, look into the virtual event guidelines and see, I think like the word event a lot of time confuses people but let's look at it from a perspective of virtual engagements. What are the different things that you can be doing? Webinars, even you can have interviews with partners, you know, can be so interesting sometimes if you have a company that is like right now doing something amazing in terms of climate change, bam, this is the topic that all young people are right now talking about. How can you then get an interview with the CEO or with the um, head of uh, CSR? or with an employee inside, you know, if you have any connection with a, with a BD partner that can bring someone and just have an interview with people. It doesn't have to be um, like a keynote thing. You can make it an interview with a host and really engaging for people. You can make um, the master classes that we were just talking about it with. Um, I think it was Michelle that mentioned it. Webinars, all of these things are there and you just need to first understand what are your strategic alliances also working on? What are their priorities? What are their focuses? What are your focuses as well? And how do they align? And how can it be implemented in whatever format? Okay, so really take that time to look into those things. Uh, now more going into um, your replanning time because virtual is gonna stay. 
And that's the thing I can tell you now working actually in the corporate sector, um, virtual is a thing. We cannot neglect it anymore. We cannot live it anymore. And potentially we will be living with having to be working from home, quarantining, um, social distancing still for a while. Um, so it is important that we master it and we kind of get used to it because even after it, post, let's say COVID time, we will be living in a little bit of a hybrid world. You will have physical activities, but you will also be doing a lot of it virtual. So you need to make sure that you have that clear, okay? So um, before we close, I just wanna know if there's any, I would answer one or two questions. If not, like I am always happy to answer any questions um, on WhatsApp, you can drop me a voice note. I'm not in the PR groups anymore because obviously I left ISAC, um, <laughs> but I'm always happy to be supporting people. A lot of times people write me and I still kind of just send them some thoughts from time to time. So um, is there anything, any question of which engagements that anyone has right now that I can tackle now? Or if not, you can just write me. All good. I, I love like, oh, mm, let's see. <laughs> okay. I have one, uh, Noel. Oh, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of strategic alliances, when you try to actually initiate with the partnerships, uh, so far so on, uh, the person in charge from the other organization should be from the PR side as well, or like it could be from the... Um, board or like a general board or something that's actually responsible for that kind of cooperation as well? Well, it works the best when it doesn't have to be PR itself, but partnership management or collaborations or business development. Um, they call it externally towards us in really different ways. Um, and um, like it's better because their strategy is also to be building up on partnerships so that you are aligned. So make sure that you also, I think that that's a really good question that you asked it right now, Andy, because I didn't mention it. The contact person you have in strategic alliances, even in, when you're working in companies, needs to be the right one. Because you cannot be talking with the marketing person with from BD perspective um, inside of a company when you're trying to bring interest into the company. No, You need to talk with talent acquisition, obviously. Um, and the same goes for PR. Um, when you're working with strategic alliances, make sure that you really um, find the person that is in charge of doing the partnership management, partnership relations. Um, if, it's, if it's specifically to a project, then it's fine because then you know that it's the head of the project inside of the, the organization. But all of the people I work with were in charge of partnerships, all of it. Just for the OSCD was different because they have like a youth chapter inside of it. And um, the youth chapter was working on policies. So then I was talking with a policy, a policy analyst but because she was running an initiative and sh she was working with me in that initiative. But besides that, it was always someone in charge of partnerships and building collaborations. Okay. Good. No, guys, I can no. imagine that it's not easy. Ah, you have another question? No, no, no. I'm just saying thank you. Ah, okay. No, I, I just want to say that I can imagine that it's not easy for all of you um, working on the current co contest. Ah, Kika, go ahead. One last question. Because we need to uh, go so you have a little bit of break. I have a question. It's for Isaac alumni. So I'm just curious, like, how do you balance out their interest in collaborating with Isaac? Because... I sometimes feel like um, some of these alumni that we've been talking to use it as an opportunity to possibly micromanage the way we do things right now in Isaac. So I'm just curious, like, how do you make sure that it's more of like a collaborative process instead of them trying to <laughs> use it as an opportunity to lead Isaac again, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Mm, that mm, makes sense. Well if the alumni is first of all not fully engaged inside of the alumni organization of your of your country then sorry but you have all the all the um uh, how do you say permission to also say sorry but right now no uh or thank you for your inputs like you can do it in a really pr way thank you for your inputs we will take it into consideration um but if it's someone that is inside of the alumni uh, 
uh, organization of your country, then um, it really then you need to relook on how the partnership is being done. Because for example, for um, Alumni International, what we had is we had an MOU and we really clearly said, this is how we are working together. And this is the way, the things that we are gonna be doing. And um, they, they never got involved in anything of this. We would go to them when we needed their inputs for things, but they would never come and push on stuff. Sometimes when we were having a conversation, the girl would like drop me like a comment of like, oh, why are you doing this, the remote internships? And I'm like, thank you. Yes, ah, thank you for your input. I will take it. I will pass it on to the next person, to the person working on the project, you know? But that's the only thing you can do because there's always going to be people that were, are so passionate about ISAC even though they have left, you know? And we still want to keep on doing it and keep on, um, keep on like, feeling that connection to ISAC. But just build a clear MOU or a letter of intent at least with, with the alumni organization in your country to be 100% sure of that clarity of what are the things that you're actually working with together, okay? I think like someone has one last question. Last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the last one. So I want to... <laughs> I want to ask, uh, because this is also my first time uh, heard about Strategy Alliance, then I want to ask uh, the corporate or the company that we are working with, for example, employer branding or uh, any, uh, let's say, uh, employer branding initiative, can they also be our strategic alliance? For and employer they branding? Counted as our strategy alliance, yeah, that collaborate yes, with course. us, let's say. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I did a lot of like uh, promotion for JCI. JCI used to even promote opportunities where uh, you, after I said, could join JCI, <laughs> which is kind of a bit of like employer branding, but it's, it doesn't, as a strategic alliance, we wouldn't call it employer branding. We would call it like, let's say, just promotion or supporting or whatever you want to call it because it, you're not being hired. In those companies, a lot of times you work a lot of times as a mm -hmm. as a volunteer, like in ISEC or you have a stipend. So you are not officially an employer. So you can still be doing these things. You can be promoting opportunities inside of your strategic alliances for your members to maybe become like participating projects that they're running. So if, for example, let's say Teach for Malaysia has uh, an event and they need people to support in the event, you can promote that, you know? So, totally so the important. type of so the type of strategic alliance uh, not only uh, restrained to youth organization, NGO, government, and UN agency, it can be also corporate, is it? Well, that's what I was mentioning at the beginning. There is a difference, no? Because when we're talking from a corporate perspective, um, you're doing something and you're doing it also based on a contract or on an agreement and you have some sort of like um, financial incentive inside of it. With strategic alliances, we don't because we're doing projects that are bringing, where we're looking more about like a, let's say, um, more value oriented thing. What we're, what we're doing is like the incentive for us is to bring value to each other. Of course, it's the same incentive for when you're working with a company but you have the financial perspective in it. With a PR partner, you don't. You're really just building a relationship and really like being active. Like for example, with JCI, fun fact or like funny anecdote, with the person that I was um, my partner man partner manage manager uh, from JCI, I'm friends with her now. Like I left Isaac and we chat. Like literally, like I had a call with her like one week ago just to know how we're doing. You know, because like it's really about building a relationship to ensure and nurturing the relationship and ensuring that we are collaborating in different aspects of what we're doing as organizations, okay? That's the difference. With a company, you cannot do that. <laughs> With a company, you are providing, let's say, a little bit more of a service. Yeah, there you go. You can also use JCI. They already know us really well. So you can just be Isaac and then they're like, yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Then I will leave you now, guys. <laughs>